Hi, everybody. It's my great pleasure uh, to be here today to talk with you about Quickset and its application in lower extremity trauma. My name is uh, Sebastian Parat. I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery in France, in Marseille. I'm uh, working in a department that is dealing both with reconstructive surgery and with trauma surgery. And my main interest is hip and knee surgeries at its whole. We're going to talk about Quickset, which is a bone substitute, an injectable bone substitute that becomes bone that has biological and mechanical properties. Why are we talking about that? Because dealing with major bone loss is a part of our daily practice. In trauma, particularly, where patients are arriving with big crush or with big non-unions or with complex problem, and we have to find the solution to treat these patients. We have no more than five years of clinical experience with the quick set in trauma. We have been using it in fractures, in different type of cavity fillings. We have been using it after hardware removal to fill the hole left by the hardware removal. And we have been using it finally for complex cases where we were unable to use anything else. So that's why I want to share with you today and we're gonna go through these four type of indication for lower extremities. So first of all, we're gonna start with the fracture. I, I have to come back on my early experience with the quick set. I, I have to tell you that uh, I use it because first, it's simple. That means that my first use was on a Sunday for a trauma call, and I had to take care of this patient. You can see the fracture just below the blade plate, uh, inserted 20 years before. So my surgical plan was to remove the blade plate, to graft with something into the neck to make sure that my screw will be right in place after that and to insert a gamma nail type nail after that. So basically I did what I, I scheduled to and I removed everything, put the nail in and grafted the uh, uh, femoral neck to make sure that my screw will stay in place after that. It was quite easy to use, no problem uh, when I used Quickset then and I was very happy to see the results over the time with a very good healing of the fracture and a very good functional result for the patient. More interestingly, I've, I've seen some bone and, and product interpenetration there. So that was my next question. What is the product becoming? I was sure that it was becoming bone, but I wanted to get more information about that. That's why for this case, and you see it's a typical tibial plateau fracture that I had to treat for this case, I had to remove one wire that I used to fix the uh, spine on this tibial plateau fracture. And during the same time, I asked the patient if I was able to do a biopsy on her during this hardware removal. And she said, yeah, no problem. And I was very happy when I saw the results of the biopsy because it was four months after the uh, uh, initial uh, fracture treatment. And you can see that even four months after, all the white parts here are the quick set. I was able to see a la, uh, mineralized lamellar border. I was able to see some osteoclastic cell, and I was able to see some blood vessel with product in between all that. That was to me the meaning that the product was becoming bone and that we had a very good interpenetration of both. And I was very happy to see that. And uh, at 18 months, when I removed the rest of the hardware, I was able to see even better with even more bone instead of the graft. And so that was a very good sign to me that pushed me to use this more and more. And I think that this interpenetration is related to the porosity of this product, which is very different from the previous calcium phosphate that have been used in the past. In fact, for the quick set, there's a mesoporosity, there's a microporosity, and there's a macroporosity. That means that there are different types of porosity that is giving a kind of possibility for the blood cells and for the, for the bone cells around to penetrate into the product. And this is important because it's not altering the mechanical properties of the product that are uh, very important because the mechanical properties and the mechanical strength of the product is comprised between the cortical bone and the cancellous bone, which is very important. And therefore, it's improving the screw fixation, particularly in the elderly. And we have done pull-out tests to make sure that that was the reality uh, in vitro and that was according to what we obtained, that was the same feeling that what we had in vivo. The other point, it's safe. 
that is important because when a product is easy to use, when it's becoming bone, when it's improving screw fixation, of course, it should be safe. And we have more than 600 cases in our department without any specific complication. And this is very important to us as well, that is pushing us to use it more and more. And finally, to us, it's cost effective. Why? Because we can allow, the, due to the mechanical properties, an earlier range of motion. We can allow an earlier weight bearing to the patient and we can discharge them earlier than before, which is very interesting for us in terms of cost. So we're going to see a different type of application, and one of the first is the tibial plateau fracture. We have a comparative study, actually, uh, of uh, Quickset versus the Xenograft DBM that we were using before. So it's a comparative study uh, comparing Quickset versus DBM, Xenograft, or Granol. It's uh, based on the paper of the literature that compared biomechanically the results of the different type of graft and saying that the bone substitute with screws is, is better than autograft, for example. So the hypothesis for this study was that an earlier motion and a better fixation stability could be obtained with the quick set. So we wanted to compare the safety, the rate of complication, basically, the functional results with the knee osteoarthritis outcome score, that is a, a knee-related uh, questionnaire of quality of life, and of course with an X-ray and CT uh, analysis evaluating the loss of reduction within and between the two techniques. So it's a retrospective comparative study with a comparative uh, Schatzker type in the two groups. 48 patients have been included between 2011 and 2012 in the department. I was the uh, surgeon uh, who were, was treating this patient and they were matched according age, gender and BMI. So the surgical technique is uh, always ca almost always the same uh, with the product. You see that we do a primary uh, reduction, a primary uh, a control of the surface of uh, the, the fracture, and then we are injecting the product there to feel all the defect uh, that you can see here for a lateral plateau, but it could be the same for the medial plateau. And then we are bringing back the bone over the top of the product. There's uh, 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 often we do a, a primary fixation just with an osteosuture that is helping us to maintain the reduction of the fracture, uh, uh, as you can see here with this uh, osteosuture. And uh, then we are going to be able to apply the plate over the top of it. And you can see that the fracture reduction is maintained all over the time. This is very interesting because you have the pre-op CT scan for this patient and you can see the post-operative X-ray for this patient with a, a good uh, restoration of the anatomy of this patient and with graft that is all there. So you can use that for different type of fracture and you can see here, sometimes I complete the injection by a percutaneous injection or using a cannula, using a suction on the opposite side. It's for more complex fracture as you can see here. The same thing, another example of lateral compaction fracture. You can see a very lateral fracture with the graft here and only screws with once again a very good reduction and a good stability over the time. What about the results in this study? So in terms of complication, no difference between the two groups. In terms of discharge of the patient, no difference uh, between the two groups because at that time we were keeping the patient longer than now. More interestingly, we were able to show a significant conservative or significant conservation of the reduction and a better conservation of the reduction in the quickset group versus the standard graft group. Second, at one year, the mean flexion was better in the quickset group because we can allow the earlier range of motion gain in the quickset group. And you can see the type of flexion that we are able to obtain now for our patient. And it's uh, quite a standard, which was not the case uh, years before. This study is uh, going to be uh, published soon and you will be able to get it. So from the classical tibial plateau with open reduction and plate fixation, we move towards another technique, which is the tibioplasty. For less complex fracture, instead of opening everything, we decided to not open and to take the uh, technique used for the spine surgery and to bring it to the knee uh, and to inject, of course, the quick set instead of any PMMA or anything to uh, reduce and to maintain the reduction of the fracture and to graft. 
So the hypothesis was that Kwikset may be safe and efficient in percutaneous tibial plasty for the treatment of Schatzker type 3 tibial plateau fractures. We wanted to evaluate once again the safety, the quality of the reduction, and the functional results. So the technique is very standardized. Step one, we are performing a reduction using the balloon, as you can see here, and we are maintaining the reduction by and with a temporary uh, wire. Second, we are performing the injection of the quick set. And you can see here that we are injecting from me the medial side, and you can see the cannula. And I like to put a cannula on the opposite side with a suction device to attract the quick set all along the tibial plateau to make sure that I'm going to feel all the defect without having overpressure into the joint. And you can see the postoperative CT for the typical patient with one screw. You can see the product there, and you can see different examples for here, there. And uh, we are not using any brace because the goal is to make our patient move as soon as possible. There's an immediate full range of motion authorized, known weight bearing during one month and after the starting weight bear, and then CT evaluation and CUS and complication, of course, and range of knee motion are collected at one year. So it's still an ongoing study. We started this prospective study. We have now 20 cases included. And of course, we are keep on working on this study. There's also application for the foot and ankle. Of course, uh, the calcaneus fracture, which is very interesting. There's a typical example of a male of 35 years old that have uh, this uh, impaction uh, fracture of the uh, um, calcaneus, and you see with the bowler angle that is uh, dramatically uh, uh, modified. And of course, we, we were unable to leave this patient like that. So at that time, uh, the patient was treated with the plate that was available in our department, but there's no uh, the Artrex uh, uh, tibial, uh, the Artrex calcaneus plate with the specific quit that is available, and that's what we are using now. But you can see that the combination of a plate with the quick set was very interesting to restore the uh, bowler angle and to restore the anatomy of the calcaneus. And uh, we did the, perform the removal of the plate for this patient after 12 months, and you can see the restoration of the anatomy of the calcaneus. Same thing for the tibial pylon fracture. And once again, at the time of the surgery, the, the, the tibial plate of Artrex was not available, but it could be performed with the tibial plate from Artrex there. You can see the big defect that is here for this patient, and you can see that there's a big piece of bone here. Here you can see the talus, and here in the middle there's almost nothing. So you can see that I grafted all this area there with quick set, and I put it lots of graft there to maintain the fracture reduction to enhance the screw fixation. And you can see the results with this patient at three months. So you can see the graft is here. Of course, we still see the graft because it's important. But you can see the interest of allowing an earlier and an early range of motion restoration for this patient. And you can see the walking pattern for this patient probably because we have been able to maintain the fracture reduction and to restore the anatomy of the tibiotalar joint. And, uh, it's interesting as well for the foot surgery. I'm not performing foot surgery anymore. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Marianne Elix, who is doing the foot surgery in our department, uh, for sharing this case with us. And uh, you can see this list frank dislocation uh, with uh, bone loss as well due to the energy of the trauma. And she was able to use and to graft and to use the quick set and to graft the uh, metatarsal part there in this foot with, once again, very interesting results. So we have seen the interest of a quick set for fractures, and there's many applications in the lower extremities. What about cavity filling? We have sometimes uh, to fill cavity. We can use it percutaneously, and it's one of the main advantage of this product. And uh, we're going to see different type of example together. You can see this cyst uh, on the uh, medial part of the malleola. And you can see that I've been able to fill this cyst. And there, I wanted to control that under arthroscopic evaluation but, uh, and under fluoroscopic. But I was able to fill this defect. And you can see at G1, the product is here. And you can see that one year after, there's a very good integration, no cyst anymore. And the patient has a very good uh, follow-up results. Another example, this woman, uh, she got a talus fracture, and then she got an orthopedic treatment in another center with a cast. The fracture healed finally, but she got a, a AVN of the talus, 
you can see the AVN of the talus very well here, and you can see as well a big defect uh, on the calcaneus that was very painful. And this cyst was also very painful. So I decided to graft first the cyst on the talus with the quickset, and second, I decided to graft without doing any incision because I wanted to save the tattoo of this patient. Uh, I wanted to perform a percutaneous uh, aspiration guided uh, uh, injection of the quickset. So you see the Gem City trocar here. You see a, another trocar here with the cannula directly related and connected to the section. Like that, I wanted to make sure that I was able to feel all the calcaneus by driving and by guiding uh, the uh, injection. And you can see the, the injection in the device. So injection from here and aspiration from the other part. And you can see the post-operative control for this uh, patient. You can see that there's graft all along and in all the cavity that we had preoperatively. We have a very good evaluation at one year and a very good follow-up for this patient. So we have seen the cavity filling, and in the same way, we are sometimes have to perform hardware removal. One of our fear after hardware removal, it's uh, another fracture coming on the site of the former fracture site. So that's why the idea was to prevent using Quickset a recurrent fracture after hardware removal. So that's why, based on this study that have been published years ago, and that was a biomechanical study, evaluating um, the, the risk of refracture after hardware removal. So based on this study, we went to hardware removal and augmentation with Quickset of the screw holes that were still there in place. And you can see for this example there, and you can see the one-year follow-up with a very good integration of the quick set and absolutely no recurrence of the fracture. So we are using that for tibial fracture. We are using that more interestingly also for cervical or pertrochanterian fracture. And you can see here trochanteric fracture, CAL2 for this patient that I treated with a dynamic hip screw, nothing very fancy, very classical. But this guy came because he wanted a hardware removal. So there's a very nice paper published in the literature saying that in a cadaveric study, when you are removing the hardware, you can enhance the resistance of the neck and then the, of the truck hunter if you inject some calcium phosphate substitute. So based on this principle, I started to use the quick set to enhance and to um, feel the cavity left by the screw, the cervical screw, in dynamic hip screw removal or in gamma nail removal. And you can see the follow-up of one year for this patient. He's back to the field, he's a fireman, very active man, very happy, no pain anymore. So it's interesting to prevent uh, another fracture at this site. And the last point, after using it in fractures, in cavity fillings, in hardware removal, we push a little bit more because we have to face more and more complex cases in our practice now. And we decided to use a, a quick set for these very complex cases. We have now a series of 20 complex chronic non-union with a minimum follow-up of one year. And I have to tell you that on these cases, uh, 20, um, uh, 19 healed. We had one failure. The patient was drinking a lot. She was smoking a lot and a very bad distal tibial plateau, a very bad distal pylon fracture, open fracture initially, and we were unable to treat her with this technique. However, all the others have been treated with this technique. I'm going to share with you some example. You can see this um, very bad case with a, 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 a knee prosthesis there, a hip prosthesis just above that. This guy had already two surgery for his fracture in another center. And I got him at that point with this very bad non-union here, uh, with this uh, retrograde, with retrograde nail there. So what I decided to do is I decided to remove the nail through the fracture site to not go through the knee once again. Uh, and uh, what uh, happened is that I had to deal with this big hole at the end of the plate repositioning. So what I did is that I, I used Quickset to feel all the defect left after removing all the fibrous tissue and etc. And you can see that the follow-up is interesting because at five months, the healing was not complete, but you can see that at 10 months, we have just a perfect healing of the fracture with a very nice bony remodeling around the fracture. 
and this patient is working almost normally, of course, due to the uh, former surgery, but is able to walk after two years of uh, surgeries, non-union, and etc. So we were able to save the case. Another case, complex case of septic non-union, male, 67 years old. You can see the skin that is very bad. You can see this uh, X fix that has been done in another center with a total knee just uh, on the knee, so you cannot slide. Uh, uh, um, you cannot slide a nail. Putting a plate with this skin is just. You cannot think about that. So what we decided to do, we decided to do an X fix exchange, a decortication, and adding quickset there. Uh, with blood cells to uh, enhance the uh, fixation and to enhance the healing of the fracture. You can see the follow-up after four months. You can see after 10 months, we were able to remove uh, the X-fix, and you can see after 18 months, a very good healing of the fracture. This male and this man is walking normally now. You can see a case of complex malunion. So this uh, young guy came to my clinic with this very bad walking. And with this uh, deformity and the lower extremity, you can see the, the combined, he got surgery in another center initially, and you can see the combined non-union with uh, the combined malunion with uh, some flexion there, some virus here. So what I decided to do was to go back to surgery and to remove, to perform an osteotomy at the location of the deformity, basically into the former callus that was not in the right and right place. And I decided to put a plate and then to uh, graft, of course, with once again blood cells and uh, quick set to graft the area. And you can see the quick set is here, and you can see this patient walking after that, and you can see a perfect healing of the fracture. And you can see that it doesn't have this uh, virus deformity anymore, and it doesn't have this uh, flexion problem anymore. So once again, quick set was very interesting to treat this malunion case. And so, we decided to push a little bit more. Uh, you can see this case. So this patient came to my clinics because I'm working with the plastic surgeon for flaps and etc. And this patient has been initially treated by another center uh, uh, with a flap done by the plastic surgeon. And actually, the patient was not doing well. Actually, this patient had a, a non-union of the proximal area of the, uh, of the fibular vascularized graft. So you can see it's my testing during the clinics. I was able to move uh, the, the, the patient into the proximal non-union. So I decided to go back to surgery once again with this guy. I mean, I didn't perform the first one. I, didn't, I decided to bring him back to surgery to do that. So what I did is that I uh, did an osteotomy of the, free, uh, uh, of, the, of the fibular graft to be able to realign the patient, and I decided to graft with quick set and blood cells to graft all the proximal parts just uh, beneath and just there uh, to implement the uh, fibular free graft because I wanted to have something more uh, uh, important and something stronger. And you can see that after three weeks, the patient had full range of motion. And once again, I was able to authorize range of motion because I was using quick set. I was confident into that. And uh, you can see the range of motion after three weeks. And you can see after six months, this patient is walking without crutches and with a very good healing of the fracture site here. So once again, the combination of quick set with a free fibular graft that has been done before helped us to go towards the healing of the fracture. And that's the way to say that it's a true biological solution. You can see in this case, same thing, chronic non-union, several surgery before. So that was a patient that has been referred to the plastic surgeon. They, they've scheduled to do a, a free, once again, a free fibular graft. And you can see that we are working at two teams. They are sampling and they are harvesting the free vascularized graft of the fibula. And then they are, they are branching it uh, on the fracture site. And I'm taking care of the uh, of fixation and, of course, of the uh, complement with quick set that you can see here. You can see the free vascularized graft here, uh, fibular graft here, and you can see the quick set here. And this is the, the, the early uh, postoperative x-ray. And you can see the two years postoperative x-ray with a very good healing. And this patient is working normally now without any more pain. So Toward these uh, uh, slides, I've been able to share a little bit with you our experience using Quickset in different applications in uh, lower extremity trauma for fracture, for cavity filling, for hardware removal, and also for complex cases. That means that you uh, can use Quickset in, in a diverse 
situation and there's uh, uh, multiple situation when you can use it. You just have to respect few principles. First, dry and clean as much as possible. It's not always possible, like you see in this case, because it's bleeding, of course, and etc. But you have to try to make as clean and as dry as possible. The sequence is always the same. You drill, you inject the quick set, and then you insert the screw. Many surgeons ask me, uh, but the sequence is always the same. Drill, inject, screw. And if you don't do that, don't worry, it's not a big deal, but it's better to do in this way. When you don't see, you can use fluoroscopy that's helping, that is helping you to do a kind of percutaneous injection, which is very interesting for minimal invasive surgery and to enhance the post-operative recovery of the patient. So do not hesitate to use fluoroscopy and the suction technique that I described to you, which is very simple to set up. And another point, the process that is transforming this product into, I mean, from a liquid product to uh, a solid product is a crystallization. You can see the small crystal that here, it's the liquid phase, and when they are becoming like that, this is the solid phase of the product. So it's very important to not touch the product, because if you touch it, you're going to modify the crystallization process. That means that the product is not be as hard as soon as expected. It's not a big deal, once again, but it's better to respect this crystallization process. So don't try to make it clean and etc. It's not a problem. You can put it in and leave it and it will resorb or what is needed is staying and what is not is not staying. So another point, some surgeons are like, they are telling me, you know, I, I, I've been using Quickset, it's great, but it's, it was not hard when I closed the patient. It's normal. It's normal because the setting time is 24 hours. So once again, same example. You don't have to wait to have something hard because it's going to take around two hours to become really hard from a kind of view perspective. But in terms of mechanical perspective, it's taking 24 hours to get all the full mechanical properties. So don't expect to see the product hardening before closure. But it's once again not a problem. You can authorize range of motion the day after to your patient. And we have done that for so many cases that it's not a problem at all. In conclusion, quick set, as I've shown you in the biopsy, remodels into bone, which is very interesting in our daily practice. It's simple and easy to use. It's safe out of our experience. We didn't have specific related complication. You can use it with any surgical technique. You do not have to modify your technique. You just have to use it when you have a cavitary defect. Respect the simple tips and tricks that I gave you, and that will be very easy to use and very helpful for your daily practice. And remember that it's very important to enhance screw fixation, particularly in the elderly. And we have to face more and more cases with elderly patients, with osteoporosis, with poor screw fixation. So this product is also very interesting to enhance screw fixation and to be able to give a, an earlier range of motion to our patient, to give them an earlier weight bearing, and to make sure that the fracture fixation will stay as long as possible until the healing. So for all the, this reason, I will recommend you to use Quickset in all this trauma application in the lower extremity. And I would like to thank you for your attention.